Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to try to find the gravitational potential outside a spherical shell. Now, the location right here is a distance r away from the center of the shell. Notice that this is hollow right here. This, this is the thickness of the shell. The inner radius is a, the outer radius is b. We're going to take a small element right here. So the volume of that, since we're dealing with spherical coordinates, is going to be r squared dr d theta d phi times the sine of theta. If we want to find the mass of that small little volume element, it's going to be equal to the, the density of the material, rho times the volume dv. Now to help us out, the distance from that volume element or that mass element to the location of interest, and notice we're going to pick a fixed distance r, so r, this big capital R will be a fixed value. Small r will be a variable because it'll indicate the distance away from the center to any one of the mass elements of the shell. And the distance from that location to the volume element we're going to call x. Now the angle here is the angle theta between this vector here and this vector right there. So notice that using the law of cosine, x squared will be equal to r squared plus capital R squared minus 2r big R times the cosine of the angle between them. If we then take the differential of both sides, we can say that 2x dx is going to be equal to 2r r times the sine of theta. Now, of course, the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine, which takes care of this negative here. We're going to call these two constants for a moment. So for a constant value of r and a constant value of large r, we're going to take the derivative of both sides. So we only have derivative in, the, in terms of x and in terms of theta. And then we're going to solve this for sine d theta over x to be equal to dx over r times capital R. Now, why did we do that? Well, we're going to start with the definition of the gravitational potential. And for the gravitational potential caused by the small little volume element or mass element right here is going to be equal to minus g times the mass of that element divided by the distance from the point of interest to that mass element. So when we replace dm by the density times dv, and dv is equal to that, we then get minus g rho r squared dr d theta d phi sine of theta divided by the distance x. Notice we have a sine of theta, we have a d theta, and we have an x. Those three then can be replaced by dx over r times r, and we're going to do that right here. So we have, this is equal to minus g rho r squared dr. Now d theta is going to be replaced, sine of theta is going to be replaced. We have d phi divided by x is going to be replaced. So we have a dx in the numerator and we have an r times capital R in the denominator and this r will cancel out that r. So now we're ready to integrate. We're going to integrate over x, we're going to integrate over phi, we're going to integrate over r. So when we do that, notice that g rho and capital R are constants, they can come outside. And uh, so what that means is we're going to take the gravitational potential is equal to the integral of all the d phi's, which is equal to the integral of that. So that's a minus g rho divided by r times the triple integral, because we have an r dr d phi dx. Now the d phi is the easy one to integrate because we're going to integrate all the way around 360 degrees, which is 2 pi radians. So when we integrate d phi from 0 to 2 pi, we end up with 2 pi. So this becomes equal to minus 2 pi rho g over r times the double integral of r. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the r dr here. And then we're going to have a dx over here. Now dx. We're going to integrate the, from our location. We can see that the closest approach to our location is this distance right here, which is going to be r minus this variable r right here, because r is going to vary from there to there. So we take this total distance minus this distance r. That will be the closest approach. So that means we have dx is going to be integrated from r minus little r 
to the maximum distance that x can have, which is over on the other side. So that would be r plus r over here. So those are the limits of integration for dx. So we can go ahead and integrate that and see what we get. So this is going to be equal to minus 2 pi rho g over big R times the integral of r dr times x evaluated, because if we integrate the x we get x, evaluated from r minus r to r plus r. So we plug in the upper limit, r plus r, and we subtract from that when plugging the lower limit, r minus r. Notice that this negative will cancel out that negative, make that a positive. The big R's will cancel out. So this becomes 2, yeah, that becomes 2 little r times this. So this becomes minus 4 pi rho g over big R times the integral of r times r, which is r squared dr. Now, this is going to be integrated in the radial direction from the inner radius to the outer radius, so from A to B, from A to B. So we can go ahead and integrate that integral. That will be r cubed over 3. So let's come over here. So this becomes minus 4 pi rho g over, now we have, when we integrate this, we get r cubed over 3, so we have over 3 times r times the quantity r cubed from a to b. So we plug in the upper and lower limits, this becomes equal to minus 4 pi rho g over 3r times b cubed minus a cubed. Okay, now what we have to recognize is that the volume of this, the volume of this sphere, the volume, or I should say of the shell, because it's a hollow sphere really, is going to be equal to 4 thirds pi r cubed, but it's going to be the outer b cubed minus the inner a cubed. And the mass of that is going to be the density times the volume, which is going to be 4 thirds rho whoop, times pi times b cubed minus a cubed. So since we realize that that is equal to the mass, notice we have a 4 thirds pi rho b cubed minus a cubed, all that is equal to the mass. What we're left with is a g over r. So this is equal to minus g m over r, and that is equal to the gravitational potential of a point outside the hollow sphere. So our final solution to this particular problem is simple. You can see that once you're outside the sphere, it doesn't matter what the shape of the sphere is, it doesn't matter if it's hollow or solid, you get the very same answers you would for any object that you're outside of. Now in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to find out what the gravitational potential is inside the hollow portion of that uh, spherical shell to see what a difference it makes when you're inside compared to the outside. So if you're interested, stay tuned and we'll work out that problem next.